Hello, in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use Active Directory group policy objects to standardize a typical Internet Explorer 8 deployment on a Windows 7 operating system. So in my virtual environment today, I've got a 2008 server running uh, 2008 Enterprise R2 64-bit, and I've also got Windows 7 uh, which is a virtual machine and this Windows 7 computer has the remote server administration toolkit installed on it. So I'm going to launch my group policy management console on my Windows 7 computer. So I'll click on start, go to all programs, go to administrative tools, and I've got the group policy management console. You'll see in the group policy management console I've got my domain view contoso.com. I also have a view of my current organizational units but there's also a folder called group policy objects. Every group policy object in the contoso.com domain will show up in the group policy objects container. So you'll see right now I've got bk-clx policies, I've got a default domain controller policy, and default domain policy. I'm going to right click on group policy objects and specify new, and I'm going to call this policy internet Explorer 8 standardization and I'm not going to use a starter GPO and then I'll just click on OK. This policy is going to be intended to do a standard configuration on Internet Explorer 8 that many corporations may or may not want to implement and you'll see as we right click and left click on edit um, we get our group policy management editor open. So I'm going to expand under computer configuration policies then I'm going to expand administrative templates and let me make this window a little bigger here so you can see it. I'll expand administrative templates, I'll expand Windows components and then I've got Internet Explorer as a subcategory of Windows components and you'll see there's a lot of settings in here that you can modify to lock down or standardize an Internet Explorer 8 web browser in a corporate environment using Active Directory group policy objects. So I'm going to just hit a couple of the basics today but I'm also going to teach you how you can evaluate these policies and you can customize this based on what your needs are. So the first thing uh, that we're going to take a look at in here is this policy right here. Do not allow users to enable or disable add-ons. And what I like to do as I'm evaluating policies, I like to read this as if it were a question. Do I want to do not allow users to enable or disable add-ons? Well, yes, I don't want to allow users to enable or disable add-ons, so I've double clicked on it and now I have an explanation box here. If you enable this policy settings, users cannot enable or disable add-ons through the add-on manager. Well that's great, so I want to enable. Enable is yes, disable is no. So you read the question, do not allow users to enable or disable add-ons. Yes, I don't want to allow users to enable or disable add-ons, so that's enabled. Yes, enabled. So we'll click OK on that. So users are no longer capable of adding their own add-ins to the web browser, so that's great. So the next thing I want to do is go to the Accelerators folder. And in the Accelerators folder, we want to double-click the Use Policy Accelerators policy. And if we double-click this, Use Policy Accelerators, yes or no? Well. Yes, we want to use them, but there's a caveat to this one. If you enable this policy, users can only access accelerators that are deployed through group policy. Users will not be able to add or delete accelerators. So I want to enable this, use policy accelerators, yes, but by turning this policy on, users can only add the accelerators that I've deployed using group policy objects. So if we click on OK, I can deploy default accelerators here or 
I can deploy non-default accelerators here. And if we enable this, you can show a list of non-default accelerators to install. And if I had installed a non-default accelerator, it would show up in that list. So what is a accelerator? Internet Explorer accelerators are things that allow you to take text on a web page and do something with it quickly, like insert into Google Mail or insert text from a web page directly into a blog, such as Blogger. Uh, so you may want to have accelerators on your corporate LAN, but you probably want to define which accelerators are acceptable. So that's a good policy to use. Use policy accelerators, but then define the actual accelerators that you'll allow. So from here, I want to go to the compatibility view folder. And in the compatibility view folder, I want to go to turn on Internet Explorer standards mode for local intranet. So if I double click on that, if I turn this on, turn on Internet Explorer standards mode for local intranet, yes, that's enabled. If I enable it, you enable this policy setting, Internet Explorer will use the current user agent string for local intranet content. Additionally, all local intranet standard modes will appear in the standards mode available with the latest version of Internet Explorer. That means even on my intranet, I'll be using Internet Explorer 8 standards. Well, a lot of intranets have portal software or internal applications that may not run correctly on Internet Explorer 8. So if we disable these settings, if you disable this policy, Internet Explorer will use an Internet Explorer 7 user agent string. So having this uh, Explorer standards mode for local intranet turned off essentially, we're disabling it. Now we're using Internet Explorer 7 for our standards management and you'll probably have on the local intranet a lot better compatibility and success if you disable this setting. So I'm going to click OK on that one and from here we want to go to the browsing history container. The age-old debate in a corporate environment. There's the policy prevent deleting websites that the user has visited. If we double click on this and ask ourselves the question do I want to prevent deleting websites that the user has visited? Yes or no? Oftentimes, it's yes, it's enabled. And this is in a corporate environment where people have to be responsible for the web surfing. If you enable this policy, websites that user has visited will be preserved even when the user clicks delete. So there is no anonymous web surfing on the job anymore if you enable this policy users cannot delete their web surfing history. Now at home, maybe that's not such a great deal. But on the job, when you're an enterprise administrator, it may be part of your company's regulations and standards to retain that web surfing history. So we'll enable that and we'll click OK. We can then go to the in private container. And in the in private container, we can turn off in private browsing. We ask ourselves the question, do I want to turn off in private browsing? Yes or no? Well, yes, I do. So if we enable that turn off in private browsing, we're essentially preventing users from surfing the web and not storing data about the websites they surf, including cookies, temporary internet files, history, and other data. And once again, at home, you might want to do in private browsing, but on a work network or a corporate network, it might be part of the company's policy that there is no anonymous web surfing. Everything you do on a computer at work typically gets logged and is verifiable that it was appropriate for the workplace. So I'm going to click OK on that one. And um, that's really all I would like to do today for my demonstration on how to perform a standard lockdown of your Internet Explorer 8 browser. But I'd like to just review a few things that I do as I go through and read all these policies because there's a lot of other things in here that you can manage Internet Explorer with. You can turn on a menu bar. You can customize the user agent string. You can turn off a favorites bar. 
You can adjust security features, set up internet settings, even modify the internet control panel. And you could disable the advanced page if you like or disable the privacy page. There's a lot of things you can do in here to standardize and manage how your end users are going to work with Internet Explorer 8. But the one takeaway that I like to remind people is read these scenarios like a question. Do I want to disable the advanced page? Yes, then I'd enable. Or do I want to disable the advanced page? No, then I'd disable. If I'm not quite sure what disabling the advanced page does, if I double click it, I get a description here. Or in the extended view, I also have a description in this column here. So I can just click on each one of these settings and read about what it does. And that's the best way to get familiar and comfortable working with group policy object. And it also is going to allow you the freedom to set up your own custom policies in your group policy object environment for the company that you're working at as you standardize Internet Explorer 8. So this concludes my demonstration on using group policy objects to standardize Internet Explorer 8 for a series of Windows 7 client computers. This is BrickHouseLabs.com and thank you very much for watching.